Hey everybody, Zach here from Now You Know, and we're really lucky today to have with us Javier Cavada. He is the CEO and president of a company called High View Power, and I'm speaking to him in London. My first question is, um, you know, we reported on you guys a few weeks ago on Tesla Time News, and uh, you're, you're storing energy, but you're not using lithium. Uh, so am I crazy? Are you storing energy out of thin air? I mean, definitely. I mean, we are taking, you know, we are a renewable, purely renewable energy storage technology company. But I mean, you know, there is another one technology that is the hydro, the pump hydro using water. You know, water, sun, wind. Well, what is missing? Air. Uh, but I mean, uh, as an engineer, I mean, we simply liquefy the air. That is what we do every time that we get oxygen in, in a hospital or we get nitrogen in a, in a factory. It's liquefied. It's just cooled down until it can get into a bottle or a tank and, and be transported. So, so very well known technology in that sense. Okay, so you're storing this in what you guys are calling the cryo battery. Um, and basically, like you said, you're liquefying the air around us. Um, and so explain that to our viewers. So what, what's the advantage of, of liquefying air? It sounds like a lot of work. Absolutely. No, no, I tell, I tell you that we have been doing as a society, I mean, in, in the US, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, everywhere, it's liquefaction of air is a very well-known process. I mean, when we are, you know, air is, is, is made up of uh, nitrogen, oxygen and argon, so three main components. And when you need nitrogen or oxygen for industrial or sanitary reasons, I mean, you, you need to liquefy air. So at least before I was born, it was already a normal process in the industry. So it's uh, uh, what we have been doing in high view is to take that technology to store energy uh, with one intention is how to get pump hydro or hydro plant capabilities without limitation. Limitation of where do I find the water? Where do I find the valley? Where do I find the height? Where do I find a place that they don't care to be moved out and put the water there? And, and also how to make it industrial, modular, and a little bit like uh, Tesla or, or lithium ion uh, battery system, modular, replicable, locatable. But our, let's say our market is, is the large scale, really large scale. Is, uh, that's why for us, uh, batteries are a, a big alliance for us. So, so we, we go in, I mean, quoting some of our customers, we do pump hydro in a box. We can take our box with us, put it there, and uh, not bothering the, the people who lives next to it. That's a really interesting point because, I mean, we all love pumped hydro, it's clean, but you're right, it has to be in either a perfect situation or you have to make that situation. And if you make that situation with like a dam, then you are making a huge environmental cost. Absolutely, absolutely. And there is, on top of that, I mean, we all, I, I think it's difficult to find somebody who doesn't like the pump hydro or the hydro plants that exist already. But also the same is really tough to find somebody who wants a new one, especially nearby, because it's minimum, it will take around 10 years to develop in, in really developed industry countries uh, like the US, Europe again, and, and can take decades in, in other places. So, I mean, our system is again, purely industrial and we take components, processes that are running as we speak. They are running in hundreds of locations across the US already running these kind of systems, but with a difference, not utilized to store energy, just to liquefy air and, and they don't gasify it again to run a turbine and a generator, which is what we do. I mean, the, they do it really to store and transport the, those gases, which, uh, which is pretty cool, I can say. Interesting. So I was going to ask you, like, why haven't I heard of this before? But you're right. I have heard of it. I just didn't ha haven't heard of it in the way that you're using it. So I guess that's my next question is why? Why has no one done this before? Like, I've been reporting on this industry for years and you're the first I've heard that's uh, using it to actually store. Absolutely. I mean, I tell you, High View Power was, was born in early 2000, in 2005, so it's, it's in a teenager uh, state and, and, and we have been patenting, we have a very strong intellectual property on the processes to be used in these components and these parts of equipment, very standard equipment, but for this specific storage application. And we are, and, and I tell you, I'm more than 20 years in the industry, so of course I'm cleaning up my CV from, from fossil fuel to, to cleaner fossil fuel to renewables and now energy storage. Really, if you tell me five years ago, do we need this large scale, long duration energy storage? I will tell you clear no. So, I mean, there will not be any need five years ago because there was not enough wind and solar in the grid. Uh, altering, uh, creating intermittency and balancing. So when the wind and solar are going over 20%, well, you start to need a lot of 
Tesla and lithium ion, a lot of energy storage, a lot of pump hydro. And when you go over 30%, well, your, your grid is messed up. I mean, we see that in places like here in, in London and, and well, sorry for that, but we see it in many, many places where uh, thermal is super stable, but it's super dirty, it's uh, super unsustainable. And we, we can see this after three months being at home that the sky looks really blue, uh, even downtown London. Uh, and, and well, the, the reason is that this large bulky energy storage was not uh, required if we would not run a renewable grid. That's the concise uh, reason. Interesting. So, I mean, you've been in this industry for a long time and it's only been fairly recently that even you who are in a company doing this has realized that this is a necessary thing. So that kind of explains why we because we ask on the show all the time, like, why is no one getting this? But you're, you're saying basically it's happened very fast. Absolutely, absolutely. I tell you that if you look at the, I mean, if, you, are, if I, you would be a freak like I can be looking at the library, at the books of liquefaction of air for the energy storage applications, you can find books in the late uh, 20th century. I mean, people thinking about that and, and the company took that from the university, working with some PhD people from many places and, and found technology meeting the market demand because indeed before the technology was there in the books was ready in the industrial portfolio of big companies uh, like i mean we can talk about general electric abb siemens they make all components that are fundamental for this technology but do they need energy storage i mean if you run a, ga a combined cycle gas turbine you don't need energy storage uh, or if you run a, a picker a gas picker i mean that's why i mean our competition, I mean, who is competing with what we bring to the market is the fossil fuel. I mean, it's the status quo of the previous 20, 30 years. I mean, if we continue burning stuff to produce electricity, you don't need energy storage, but then we better stop burning stuff. So how long can you store energy for? I mean, you, you can store, I mean, technically you can store it from seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. So many months, I mean, this, you, you, we are all very familiar uh, we use gas in, in our houses for heating in for, for decades and you see all these gas terminals or LNG terminals in the big harbors. I mean, those big tanks, really bulky giant tanks, they are exactly the same technology we use to store the air liquefied. So uh, liquefied natural gas and LNG, uh, uh, the same compound or building or infrastructure is identical to what we need to store the liquid air. So, so you will you, you can, of course, you will be storing and dispatching back to the grid electricity we expect mostly every day, but sometimes every week and even sometimes every month uh, because you are just a kind of safety guarantee of dispatch of electricity or of energy. So in that sense, you are guaranteeing it's not eternal, like anything is eternal. That I mean, something like three months, you, you can store it safely. And, and I mean, if you don't use your storage for three months, I mean, there's something wrong with the place where you you, why did you build it? So interesting. I mean, right. So basically, we just need to store it for usually hours because we're just waiting for peaks and troughs in the in the energy. Curve. Absolutely, and of course, there are days that you know. I mean, you have one very stormy week, and then maybe you need uh, you need several days. I mean, but I tell you, the projects that we are uh, having in the market, the the normal size is from eight hours to twelve hours. I mean, it's a very common profile for a very solar place or a very windy place. I mean, eight to, to 12 hours of, of storage, really bulky and unreliable. And, uh, when it's so reliable, I mean, probably you will not touch 365 days per year during 100 years, but, but maybe 98% of the days. I mean, if you have a, a cosmic uh, interference, I mean, if you have a, a very, uh, I mean, like, for instance, a volcano ashes event like happened a uh, couple of uh, 10 years ago, something like that. I mean, you don't get solar power uh, dispatch and you need to, but that's that's not common. I mean, that's not common. So to make a bigger battery from a cryo battery, I just need a bigger tank. I mean, definitely. That's that's the key. That's the key. And that's why that's why we see, I mean, I'm, I've, been, I've been in the Tesla factory making the energy storage batteries uh, several years ago. Uh, being, a, being in an EPC, building them, building energy storage plants with lithium ion. So we, lithium ion and cryo battery are very complementary in that sense. Lithium ion, the most expensive part is the battery cell, where is all the chemistry and the magic, you would say, happening. In our case, the magic and the most expensive part is in the liquefaction and the discharge. So the battery cell is a tank, it's a steel tank. 
a stainless steel tank, which, as you can imagine, is the less, uh, the least exotic thing and the most available stuff you can find. You use the same skills, the same supply chain, no rare earths, no rare chemicals or materials or, or recycling challenges, and, and you can just double the storage by just doubling the tanks uh, and you can double them in diameter, in height, both of them adding more tanks. So it's extremely modular and, and well, purely green, purely clean uh, in that sense. Yeah, let's talk about that. So basically all you need to do to pump the air into the tank is use some electricity and that electricity can be renewable, like solar or wind. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the only input here is electricity and air. So which, I mean, air, as we all know, is available anywhere that there are human beings and electricity is, can be from the grid, can be from a solar farm, can be from wind farm or can be from a mix. Uh, so in that sense, it's agnostic, like any energy storage asset, you, you get the electricity from wherever. Normally you will get it from the excess of wind or the excess of solar. Uh, I mean, it would not make too much sense to have a combustion system to fill uh, an energy storage asset. <laughs> and then it's zero emissions. Exactly, exactly. And when you, that's, that's a cool thing that I would like to highlight. When you are cooling down the air, and as I said, it's a extremely standard process, you are just reducing the temperature, reducing the temperature, and then, then you go from gas to the point of liquefaction. But in the meantime, there are some components of, of the air that we are breathing that don't get into liquid, but get into solid, like uh, CO2, if there is some pollution in the air, or, or the water. So, so we are extracting water, so the air, we are drying it out, and we are taking the CO2 out. So you can really capture the carbon that you have in there in a place, just to say a place like LA, that I was uh, just before the lockdown and it was a bit, uh, a bit uh, dusty atmosphere, it's smoggy, yeah, it's a better word. It was a bit smoggy. You would, you would just deliver electricity and air, but the air you deliver back to the atmosphere is, is cleaner. I mean, it's as, as cleaner as you wind. Uh, so you can store the CO2 and sell it for industrial applications, but normally the CO2 percentage in there is not very big. I didn't even think about that. Right, you're, you're able to take out the different components because they freeze at different temperatures. So you, you can actually sell the CO2 for industrial, your medical uses. I, I, and, I, and I can tell you that in UK applications, you know, it's, that's something very typical here, I'm sure, that they, they, use, they, they will use the CO2 for the brewery, for the kind of I would call it food food chain, but it's more for beer. I could say. So you could have little breweries at each of your power stations. I mean, that would be pretty cool. High view beer, liquid air, uh, energy storage beer, uh, kind of. Uh, but I mean, it's it's like any CO2 you buy. You know, you need to pay for the CO2, and and again, the CO2 you get it from the same process. You you liquefy. Uh, you liquefy air and it's one of the byproducts, the same as water. You, you get very dry water out. But you, I mean, another option is also to, to make it gasify the, it back and send it to the atmosphere. But uh, normally it's, it's a good uh, collateral advantage or benefit that you, you can add. So. Right. I mean, so you could actually be carbon negative if you want to be. Absolutely. No, no, you, you will be. I mean, you will be. It's uh, because uh, you will be. But uh, I said, no, no, no water needed, no water needed, no, no emissions. I mean, as you can imagine, I mean, where you, you can see some smoke from the, from, from the, from the plant, but it's, it's not a smoke, it's colder air. It's a bit of colder air, it's, it's, it's just uh, vapor uh, more than, or, or vaping. It's common, quite fashionable name now. Okay, so I hear our viewers watching right now at home and they're going, okay, Zach, this sounds too good to be true. I mean, you just told us that uh, it's no emissions, it's all renewable energy to make. You can build these anywhere you want. Uh, so there must be one piece of the equation. These must be super expensive to build. And, and, and I, I got just, uh, I love this question because it's exactly the lowest cost of storage today. And, but with one condition, which is a crucial condition, is that the application needs to be large enough. So, I mean, the same that other technologies, they get better the smaller they are. I mean, we get better the bigger we are. So, so for that reason, you have seen this one that we are, uh, in, we are in the construction uh, process now in Manchester, in the northern part of England. It's, uh, it's going to be double of the one from Tesla in, in Hornsdale in, in the South Australia. But for us, that's uh, quite normal. You would say the sweet spot, but the sweet spot for us is starting there onwards. So, I mean, the, the bigger, the better in a way, because we use equipment that is purely industrial. 
So, and the industry in the industry has been doing oil and gas all the last uh, 30, 40 years, and they have bulky equipment. So, so that you, you, if you can technically make it small, and then you would be fully right, would be too expensive. That's why, that's why for the smaller, we say, no, no, let's put lithium ion, let's put electrochemical, let's for the smaller applications, uh, up to I mean, one hour, two hours. For us, you can imagine the charging station. The discharging station is going to be the same if you want one hour, that if you want two hours, that if you want ten hours. So, so then, and they are the most expensive part. So, the more hours you have is quite clear. So, I mean, starting by four hours, uh, we're already unbeatable in cost. I mean, we're the lowest cost, but of course, it's much better with six hours and way better with eight hours. And, and that's, that's the, the real reason. And to that great question of why don't we have 1,000 or 1 million plants already built, uh, we, we discussed it before. There was no need. There was no need. And it's quite sad. Or the, or the market was considering there was no need because if unless you force the fossil fuel to stop in a way or to be replaced quickly, I mean, the status quo remains becoming or being the status quo. So, and, and so, so when I said that the competition is the fossil fuel, I would say, a better way to put it is the competition is to continue doing the things as, as we did it in the 90s and the early 2000s. So that's, the, that, that, that's not acceptable. Wow, this is super exciting because there's no argument to it that I can see. I mean, basically, you're, you're building some, a battery that's bigger than the Hornsdale battery in South Australia that all of our viewers know about. And it's cheaper than, I mean, on your website, and is this true? You say that basically you can be about half the cost of lithium. It is, it is, but again, it's, it's, there is a very clear, I mean, I know your, your viewers are very smart guys and, and girls, I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of them, as you know, so, but, but when, I mean, it's, it's pure arithmetics, I mean, if, if a lithium ion is, is able to make one hour, you want two hours, you need to double the cost, if you want to make 20 hours, you need to multiply by 10 the cost, I mean, in our case, uh, adding hours is, is marginal, it's marginal cost, so if it's a long, Duration. We call it long duration because it's more than four hours, but I would not call it long. I mean, it's just it's just more than four hours. Long duration would be weeks or months, but this is this is just four, five, ten hours, uh, half a day, one day. That's uh, then it's 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 not only half of a lithium ion. It's much less than much less than half, uh, but but it's just pure pure economies of scale. So when just if I, I mean, as a mechanical engineer, I need to say this. I mean, if just a turbine, a steam turbine of 50 megawatts, if you double it to 100 megawatts, the cost is not double. It's around a 40% more. I mean, and this is, you, everybody can see it in the catalog from the main manufacturers. And, and those economies of scale are getting bigger and bigger. The, the bigger is the, the megawatts, the bigger is the megawatt hour, and the bigger are proportionally the diameters and the heights of the, of the equipment, so so that's why we talk about uh, closing the the circle in a way. This is so exciting for me on this channel because one of the biggest arguments we hear all the time about how I can't be right about battery storage for renewables is they say there's not enough lithium or batteries in the world. Uh, we're going to be using them for cars. There's no way, Zach, you're going to have your batteries that you want. And so you're basically telling me as long as we got air, we can do it. Absolutely, absolutely. You go for for the first hours for the for the for the small very decentralized applications, uh, households, etc. You go with this very nice, I should not make advertisement here, but these battery walls or Tesla battery walls, they look gorgeous. And, and then you have a bulky kind of gas station, but instead of being a gas station, it's a tank with uh, liquid air that uh, you blow a steam turbine and a generator, and you get, I, I didn't mention that, but on top of doing energy storage application, this system also provides a lot of rotating uh, inertias uh, services to the grid that you know that those are being given by nuclear, by coal, by, by gas, by diesel. So everything that has a rotating equipment is balancing the grid. And well, one of the arguments I'm sure they have told you is that the batteries cannot give inertia. They just give a kind of thing called synthetic inertia that is, is like a bad copy. But I mean, if you put a large scale energy storage with rotating equipment like ours, so I mean, and things like pump hydro can do the same. You solve the equation. So, so you, you, you don't need only one technology. You need all the available energy storage technologies, but don't, don't let them tell you that we need to continue burning stuff. That's like the Stone Age. 
That's awesome to hear. Wow. It's just, it's so exciting to hear that there's a company like yours that's starting up that is uh, doing this in a completely different way. And yet, like you said, it's a proven technology. It's not some crazy thing that we have to prove works. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, if something we don't have in, in our team, in our companies, that we don't have those crazy inventors or native professors, where uh, there's industry people who have been doing this for decades, gigawatts in the back, in the shoulders uh, of install, of course, in a lot of uh, renewables, but a lot of fossil fuels also. And, and well, the company has built already two plants that have been running for several years, and, and now we are building the largest in the world. Uh, but, but well, uh, stay tuned because I expect to come with the largest in the world again pretty soon. Really? So I hear that you're coming over here across the pond to Vermont. Is that true? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we have a we have a large project in Vermont that is uh, that is bigger than the one in the UK, and and well, uh, provided that uh, borders are open and I can take a flight, but not me. I mean, we have a big team in the US already. We have a, a great office in Alexandria, in Virginia, and we have an office in in San Francisco, in California. So we are we see the US as as the market in terms of. Uh, demand today and, and size and, and, and need and well it's, it's the customers, the utilities, the IPPs, the municipal util energy companies so it's, it's overwhelming I tell you but it's great because uh, that's why we are in, in the business of partnering with people. We partner with uh, good chaps like Tenasca, uh, Tenasca Power Services to, to be our ally uh, there in, in, in ERCOT in the Texas area to, to be able to, to deliver as many as we can because I mean if we if we rely only on one company it's, it's, it's going to be too slow to what we need so that's why we need we need to create a club a bit like Tesla has been doing I mean uh, on top of buying the cars we want the, the, the battery on the wall and we want even we want the cap and the and, and, and the jumper so that's uh, that's what that's what we are doing here I mean we for the for the good for good for everyone I mean it's cleaner smart and and it's and it's available and proven you look at 2019 I mean last year I mean we were talking about a couple of gigawatts of new energy storage projects globally in lithium ion uh, but I mean you are talking about one hour one point something of duration and that's, I mean, it's clearly that the business is in that uh, frame of time. And, and well, we, we cover all, all what goes over four hours, five, 10, 12, 20. So it's, and that's, that's why, I mean, this is not a game of uh, one, one, one technology in, in town. This is as many as we can. So, but, but the thing is that in large scale, there are only three technologies which are deployable today. One is Pump Hydro, as we discussed. The other one is compressor that does pretty much the same as we would do, but it has the need of an underground cavern, a place underground to, to have it tightly. So it's a, I mean, technically it's totally feasible. It's a bit of quite costly to find a cavern that fits that demand and, and then the cryo battery, which is, which is in a way the learnings of the other two to make it industrial and make it modular. So that's why we're a bit of, of the brother or the sister of the other two in, in a way purely modular. So. And, and in short duration, I mean, let's get all the lithium ion we can in, into the ground because there is plenty of need of this uh, fast speed uh, and fast response uh, frequency regulation assets everywhere. Uh, so the more wind and more solar we deploy. And then finally, because I, I want to let you go so you can go build some more cryo batteries for us. Uh, <laughs> my last my last question here is, how has the conversation changed uh, with people in the industry? You, I'm sure you're talking to people, friends who work in the industry. Is it is it still hard to convince them that this is something, or are they getting it now? I mean, that's a wonderful one. I mean, I, I said, I mean, I've been I've been in this industry long enough. I wouldn't say so long because I'm enjoying like a little kid, and and we have a bit of one like all the industries. I mean, this is like a small village, so we are always the same people moving sometimes from company or from technology, but but we all know what others are doing, and and I can say that in the last year and a half we see a dr drastic, almost dramatic change. And, and, and the change is that, and, and that's why I said about the competition, who is the competitor. The big change is that customers, the, the big players, are not able to build new gas plants and they are not able to continue running the coal plants. And, and if they could run the coal plants and they could still build the uh, gas-fired power plants, uh, they would say, this looks great, but I mean, uh, I mean, there is such a such an industry in the fossil fuels that is uh, they have such an inertia that uh, that 
and, and we, we are not here to stop them. We are just here to surround them and, and do the, the right stuff and let them fall down the cliff. But, uh, that's well, this is super exciting. I hope that when your Vermont plant gets to a certain point, Jesse and I can come visit because that sounds really exciting. I want to show people firsthand what you guys are doing. Will be fantastic. I, I can tell you that Vermont in winter will, will, will be a big advantage. We will need so much temperature drop down to, to liquefy there, but that's, uh, that's, that's a joke. I mean, there's no big influence, but uh, we'll, let's meet in the spring or summer. <laughs> Thank you so much, Javier. I appreciate it. Now you know.